mistake, I apologize, I accidentally pressed the hotkey to turn off my stream. So this time, <laughs> I won't press the hotkey. Uh, I need to write down all my hotkeys so that way I don't accidentally... I'm supposed to press the number 2 <laughs> instead of page down. I have page down to destroy my stream, but I have page 1 or page up to start the stream. And so it's a little confusing. I, You know, it's funny, before even I started, I was just like, you know, I should write all these down and then just look at it and then press the or a corresponding key. Uh, because it'll be make, it'll make my life a lot easier so I can do all kinds of cool stuff, you know? But I was like, oh, let's get this started. And then, then shut it down. <laughs> so, that, okay, so now what I want to do is I want to press 2. Now let's see what happens. Let us see. How's everyone doing? So we got Robertson. We got Brandon up in here. We got Hakeem. Hassan. I'll see it didn't change. Oh yeah, it changed on my side. It's just not changing on your guys' side. Might be a delay then. Oh, uh, I was so confused as <laughs> what happened. <laughs> yeah. What's up, AJ? How are you? Now I can hear you loud and clear. Hey, Mr. Jones. What's up, Stan? Colas. Hey, it's been a while. Uh, Page up to you. Holy like that. Holy that like, though. <laughs> Boom. Hey, what's up, Roberto? What's up, Aaron? What's up, Tim? Um, welcome. I'm going to be doing a little quick lunch stream. And I did this little demo earlier for my students, and I had like a, uh, a picture of it that I posted recently. Um, but this, I want to actually jump in and get a little bit more into 3D Coat. And um, I'm going to be doing a tutorial, too, actually, on 3D Coat. Now, a lot of people have asked me in the past to do one, and I said I would. But, you know, the timing was never right. And now that I'm getting, you know, a little bit of my time back, I will definitely, definitely get it going. Um, just a shout-out to the people who just joined. What's up, Matthew? Histrion again. Alex, Stefano, Oliver, and Benjamin. Uh, I probably cannot answer any questions during this stream. So if you have any, I apologize. I'm not going to necessarily answer anything. I'm just going to be working and talking a little bit. Maybe if you guys ask a few questions and I see that they're worth answering, uh, if they are worth my time, you know what I mean? Like, if they if they just make sense and it's not like, you know, the common kinds of questions I get, like, what brush, is ZBrush better, or 3D Coat, these types of questions, uh, I kind of answered them in a previous stream, so if you just want to go back, you can watch them on my Facebook videos feed. But if you want to find, like, where I'm going to put a lot of these videos, if you go to my Facebook page, that's where you want to go, Robot Pencil uh, Art. I believe is the tag at Robot Pencil Art, which is on Facebook. And so I'm going to try to organize all these videos there, so that way you don't have to kind of like go through my actual profile and look for them constantly. Oh, this is interesting. So now that I'm streaming, it's I think it's a little bit more laggier. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, it's because I have Steady Stroke on. I was like, I was like that's bizarre, because I stream all the time. Yeah, never mind. So I'm going to try to make a little bit more interesting shape. So uh, I'm going to be making a video tutorial series on this relatively soon. The first video is very much like what you would have gotten out of uh, Jama's Learn Squared video, which I think are better. You should definitely go there. They're like pretty in-depth, and they teach you more than just 3D code. They teach you all this great stuff. Again, I'm promoting his, his course because it's a course that I took, and it's the one that like really cemented my uh, confidence. Uh, but what I'm going to be talking about is stuff that are just a little bit more secondhand, maybe just, just getting you into it, getting you familiar with it. And then uh, when you feel comfortable, you can probably take a little bit more expensive course uh, like Jama's. Uh, but yeah, he's he's a powerhouse and he has like a lot of insight in that stuff. But yeah, again, I'm not endorsed or in any way. This is just my general feedback. Uh, if you've talked to anyone who's ever taken his, his course, you'll you'll hear the very similar feedback. So in the previous video, you saw me like cutting and chopping apart um, my 3D forms. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm doing a little bit of painting. And I get this place to where I, th or this, this sculpt into a place where I think is cool. And then I'm going to then uh, do some fun stuff with it. Mm. 
Yeah. So let me see what's going on here. Let's see what's what everyone is. Oh, it's literally called three coat. <laughs> hey. What's up, Benjamin? Oliver? When? What's up, when? Matthew, Alex, Powell, and then Roberto again. What what ZBrush brush do you use? You bastard. Do you ever prefer 3D coat over Mudbox? It's a very similar question um, to like ZBrush and Mudbox and 3D coat and all that stuff. It's just I've tried Mudbox. I don't think it's um, as good as ZBrush, but I know people who love it. You know, so I, I'm not gonna have any comment on that. Again, it's just like, what are you into? And so I'm gonna do something like this. But thanks guys for hanging out. This is just like, again, uh, I'm prepping to do a tutorial. And I'm not going to be talking about this specifically during the tutorial. I've already had some things I've prepped. Um, but I'm just, you know, trying to think of it overall. Like, what is the overall goal of the tutorial series? So that way when I release them in, in you know, over the weeks, then, you know, you're, it's an experience that will take you from novice to... Um, beginner to novice into 3D code. That's the goal of it. So there's like a cool tool, it's called a plane tool. But the plane tool is pretty hard to, to work with in some instances. Like right there it's pretty cool, but it's like, it's just separated my forms. You know, you can do crazy stuff like that. But I don't want to get too many I don't want to cut too much out of this, so I'm going to go ahead and just do a little bit of this. Maybe a little bit of that. It's a little too sharp. Let's get that going. Let's cut into this. And then I think we're ready. I think we're ready to do some fun stuff. Alright, so let's just extrude this out. Let's increase the resolution. Let's make this a proper bust. Let's go ahead and like cut off like so it's like, you know, nice and clean. Let's clean these. But uh yeah, I mean, how's everyone's week? How's everyone's weekend? Did everyone have a good weekend? I know it's Tuesday. It's a little late to ask that kind of question. But I'm still going to ask it. I had a pretty good one. I relaxed. Hung out with the fans. Just chilled out. Alright. Um, you know, relaxing and chilling with the fam is like my favorite thing these days. Uh, since I'm working from home, I like, you know, was hanging out with the kids a little bit. They were doing like some gymnastics. It was cool to see. Uh, and then I was, you know, uh, hanging out with the wife. We lay, lay down for a little bit. It was nice. It's nice to do stuff like that. Like work and then take a break and work. Take a break. So let me go ahead and read what people are saying. So people are asking about the software. It's, yep, 3D Coat. What's up, Remy? Good to see you. The way you were nudging it looked like ZBrush. Well, I mean, it's a 3D sculpting software, right? Yes, I do. This is cool. I'm sitting at at a lovely all-day brunch spot in Toronto, enjoying an incredible Caesar and watching Anthony Jones sculpt something in cyberspace. 21st century. Am I right? We are living in the future. That's such a cool thing, right? Like, I, I had the same thing happen to me. I was watching uh, Peter Hans. Uh, he, he started doing Facebook Live, and Terrell Whitlatch did one this morning, and I was like, what? And I'm so excited that this, this is getting very popular. People are starting to do more of it. Because it's really easy. Everyone's already on Facebook. And usually whenever people promote streams, it's like, hey, go to my Twitch or my live stream or my whatever. But if it's already on Facebook, it's like, oh, well, might as well just watch it right now. And there's, like, no announcements or to it in any way and catches people who are already there ready to go. Uh, and it's like, it's easy too. It's not like taking a lot of bandwidth from your phone or your tablet or whatever. Right on, Sir Anthony. What's up, Everton? Uh, 3D Coat is the program, Chris John. This is my first time watching one of your streams from the beginning. I'm looking forward to getting some insight and inspiration with your work. I'm currently working towards a career in 3D animation. Oh, people already answered that question for me. The answer... The awesome thing about 3D code is voxel modeling. Yeah, totally. I got older. 
<laughs> Roberto with. Kenwood, how do you do a live Facebook stream with your desktop? Well, that is the secret, isn't it? Uh, I'll, I'll do a thing about it. I'll maybe just make a video about how to do it. But, like, there's a video of how to do it. So it's kind of silly if I did a video on it. Like, you just, just type in what you would imagine to type in on the search engine of Google, and you will probably find the same things that I found. And it's all completely free. So there's no thing to spend any money on. Um, so don't worry about that. Pretty good. Still have a lot of projects at work. All right, cool, Oliver. Stefano, quite good myself. Was in Rome meeting up with friends, drawing all day long. Okay. Question, AJ, you have seemed to be pretty... Uh, wait, I'm sorry. AJ, you have... Or you seem to have pretty hard edges there. What's the secret? High poly count? Uh, yeah, I mean, you always have to have a pretty decent poly count. Right now, I'm working with about 800,000, which is not that much in the world of poly counts, but like now I just took it to a million. So I'm going to do the next stage so I can kind of move on with the, the, the thing and then call it an end. So I've been spending like maybe no more than 10, maybe 15 minutes on this thing, give or take, right, because I was talking. Uh, but... With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. I'm going to hide the the other one. I'm going to reduce this poly count pretty significantly and smooth it. So it kind of tries to keep its poly count relatively the same. Um, I think I could probably take it down a notch more. Let's do that. So now it's at 30,000. And then I'm going to do auto topo. And I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to take it to 6,500 polys. So I'm making this basically a low poly. Uh, I'm not going to get too deep into this, but anyone who knows anything about 3D, what I'm doing is making this pretty much game ready. And uh, I'm saying that very loosely. I mean, I don't think it's animation ready, but it's game engine ready. <laughs> right? I don't really care about animation because I'm not really going to animate this. You know, you know what your goals are. If my goal is to have like a cool in-game in looking asset at the end of this, then then I'm doing all right. So the first step is to lower the topology. Bam, it's pretty low, pretty cool. Doesn't look broken. And then uh, let's go ahead and turn this off. We'll call this one low, and then we'll call this one high. And then I'll turn on the high one, and then we'll go ahead and bake the normals onto this thing. Looks fine to me. Let's turn it to inner shell. Do we see any overlapping? Nope. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm not going to bake the occlusion. I do want it at a higher resolution. I want it to be through Unreal. And I want it to be auto-mapped, which basically means it's going to unwrap it, which now makes it painting ready. And then uh, that should be it. So I can turn this off, go to the paint room, and bam, there it is. Now I forgot to turn off the shader, and it does like this weird cavity stuff, but it's okay, because I can just turn that off. Uh, or I can even throw that away. I don't really need that now. And uh, so, bam, there it is. And then the wireframe's pretty slow, and we got the normal maps. It's pretty easy. Life is great. Uh, Alessandro, saw you render earlier on Incredible. Incredible. That took forty minutes. Well, you can probably see what's happening. Like this is that took like less than a minute and two. I mean, this whole process up to this point, probably a, a total a lapse is like fifteen twenty minutes. Right. You, Anthony, first time seeing you live. Oh, cool, man. Oh, it's a pleasure. Uh, Rubberson, hey, AJ, big fan of your work. You work in home? Actually, what is your big inspiration for the models you do? Uh, mostly, like, you know, other artists, but uh, also I look at things that are not art, like car, I mean, not done by, like, concept artists, but, like, other kinds of artists, industrial designers, graphic designers, these people. Hey, what's up, Fod? Hey, man. Good to see you live. Great bust shape, as always. Whatever, dude. You're freaking a master at this software as well. Like, you're really, really good. In fact, I am always inspired whenever I see stuff that you do. Uh, I like the latest stuff you've been doing, like the crazy, weird, like, cylindrical, large-shaped people. Really good stuff. Hi, Anthony. Uh, are there some differences amongst amateur and professional versions of 3D code? Uh, I think the professional lets you export and save certain things. The the amateur, the lower level, or the student version doesn't let you do that stuff. Or it's like a limited time limit. I, I'm not entirely sure. But I don't think there's really a different versions. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into like the painting of this. So um, what I like to do is I like to turn on all these things, which is if you look up here, you have your bump, you got your color, and then you got your gloss. 
And then uh, I have my paint tool open, but let's go ahead and work with black. I like to basically have um, colors that are that have no color, like basically graphic read. And we'll call this um, we'll call this graphic read one. And then <laughs> you guys hear my family in the background. My wife and daughter. And daughter is in the restroom. And so right now I'm just gonna go ahead and just do some fun popping it out. Oh you know what? I had that way too large, this bump. That's why it's gonna look bizarre. And I want this to ignore back facing so it's gonna go straight through my model. And I actually want it to be a little bit more interesting than what I just did. And I can go like something like this. And then I can get something really cool like that. And then I can get the eraser and just basically do the same thing. And as you can see what's happened is that like I'm painting in the normal maps and the gloss. So now I'm getting a more realistic like portrayal of how this would look in a game engine versus what it would have normally been, which is just a guess. Um, or a concept. Like this is more than just a concept is what I'm trying to get at. This is like potentially the final product. Um, because you could throw this into Unreal or you could throw this into Marmoset or any kind of viewer and get a really good sense of what it's supposed to be. So let's go ahead and do another kind of cool graphic read break apart. Kind of similar to what I did earlier. Again, I'm just testing. It's all about speed and getting better and better at this requires you to do it often and keep practicing it so you understand kind of the system in which this works like how it, how you can amplify your process the whole time all right let me kind of be careful where i put this stuff and it's cool because it's all in its own layer right so i can control the roughness so i can make this a little bit more matte you know, so it's very matte material now. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So let me try to... Oh, what's up, Kalen? Let's see, Kalen, let's see who else has just joined. So we got Antonio. Hey, what's up, man? I think I already said hi to you, Oliver. What's up, Felipe? Will you go through all the hotkeys in 3D Coat? Uh, I, have a, I make a lot of my hotkeys, so I'll definitely talk about that. And then... Uh, yeah. Hey, man, do you prefer to work sitting or chair or standing? Uh, all of them. Cutest stream ever, said by Kaylin. Student version don't allow commercial use. Okay. Thank you, J. Emil, H.C., Ken Wood. So I noticed that you use the auto-topo process. Have you uh, played around with the manual retopo? Yep, I have. If you can do some demos on that sometime, that would be cool. I think that's what you're getting at. Pow, level up, session 39 with Andy Jones. That's the first time I heard about you. Oh, great. Those guys are awesome. I love those post bastards. Pretty neat. What's the purpose of the black paint? Uh, Lloyd, what's up? Lloyd and Kevin, Mr. Jones wanted your input on how you worked at 3D Coat Basics compared to other product pa packages. Hope to see you back in the IE next year. What's up, Remy? Um, going back to someone else's, what's the purpose of the black paint? I'm just doing graphic read. So if you ever see me paint paint, like, I always separate my uh, my values through the local values first. I don't go and start putting lighting or anything. So this is, like, very similar. I'm not necessarily sitting here and putting in the materials yet. I'm just breaking it apart, and I'll worry about the materials uh, later. And, uh, like, you saw that even when I was sculpting this, I didn't really worry about the sculpt either. Um, like... If it was perfect, I just wanted to get a basic silhouette. Well, let's get the roughness back to a high percentage. So it's pretty shiny. Uh, and let's change the, the lighting of this environment a little bit too. Let's get this one. I think that's the same actually. It's just a little dark. I can't really see much. All right, there we go. And now I'm going to go ahead and continue cutting apart. I think I cut apart too much. I think I need to bring back some of this black shape. But I'm going to go ahead and do something like this. And then just make it pretty interesting and then cut back into it.
Yeah, see, this is like, I'm already putting too much time. But that's the part, like, this is the part where you want to spend a lot of time, though, right? You want to spend all your time uh, and effort in terms of designing, you know, in design, like when you're actually doing design work. You don't want to spend it uh, trying to figure out how to use the tools. You want to, like, create cool and interesting designs. So let's go ahead and make another layer, and let's let's talk about how cool this is going to be. So I'm going to make another layer. I'm going to put this layer, uh, I guess it doesn't matter. I'm going to put this layer, and I'm going to call it Graphic Lead 2. And then I'm going to go ahead and basically fill this whole layer with a very light color. I'm going to do this. Whoops. Sorry if you hear all the things in the background, like my dog barking, my wife talking. Normally I, I work in... Uh, an office whenever I do these types of things, but you know, I think it's really good for me to start working from home. So I'm going to go ahead and just do this until I see the kind of material I want. This is kind of cool. This is nice. Super shiny. But you're thinking, like, what happened to all that dark stuff that you did earlier? In fact, uh, I'm going to go here. I can already notice that the depth of this stuff is pretty bad. So I'm going to go 65. 65 would be good. Maybe let's do 40. Hello? Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, I think what happened is I had a hotkey to mute myself. I'm just going to turn that hotkey off. It seems like a silly thing to have on. As I was saying is that I'm just like basically painting... Uh, I'm painting in the details as I see them in. And it's just like really easy. And unlike other softwares like ZBrush or uh, whatever, I can just go in here and start to you know, paint and grunge textures. You mean, I, I can go in here, I can go to like elastic type of materials and I can start painting this in there. So if I feel like some parts of it can be a little bit worn to the point where it's like that, or I can go to dirt, some cool stuff in dirt. And I believe dirt lives in, dirt lives near the crevices of stuff, but like I can paint it all throughout this thing. You know, but that's like a detail thing. So I'm gonna save that once I get the other material going. So let's get the other material, and we'll call this um, mat, or we'll call it gun metal. And then this one, I will. I'm gonna go ahead and blend it. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, it looks like I hear no echo. Oh, never mind. Had two tabs open. <laughs> yeah, you're just too excited. You had double double streams going. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and wait. Hold on just a second, Delilah. Can you please close the door? When Papa's streaming, just close the door, okay? Thank you. All right, so then I'm going to have this clip to my original layer and then invert it so that way I'm only, or actually no, I'm not inverting it this time, right? Because I will actually want to paint onto my graphic read. Yeah, that's what I want. And I picked this material. And again, you can pick like a very soft paint brushy thing. And I'm only going to gloss over this because I don't want it to be too metal looking. Uh, but then I can pick this one in here. I want it to be like pretty matte. And it's just like real fast. N nothing's slowing me down. Like it's in terms of speed, it's pretty quick. Uh, I mean, you could do cool stuff, like you could switch it to the gold now and then like start painting gold if you wanted, but who wants to do gold right now? That's kind of bizarre. Actually, you know what? If I could do like a, like kind of like a, sh like a sheen of it, I mean, it might be nice. But it's starting to kind of ruin the matte black, so I can erase it. Again, I have these hotkeys like Photoshop, so E for eraser, B for brush. Right. So this is pretty cool. Right. It's pretty easy. I didn't do much on the back, but it's fine. We're not I'm not gonna really show the back anyway. So let's do some details now, right? Let's do um 
Let's like add some gold little buttons or bolts. And this one's not going to be mask at all. I was going to call this bolts. This one's going to have the normal on, and it's going to have the color. Well, actually, I guess it doesn't matter if I'm actually picking the metals over here. Let's get the super bolt, and then we'll just do like a circle. It doesn't have to be fancy. And I can go in here, and now with my normal brush very high, I can basically stamp this in. Wait, what's happening here? Oh, I'm in the racer. I hate when I do that. There you go. So I'm going to pick this actually, so that way I just do it. Pink, 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 gold, gold bolts. But see, it's all fake. It's not really being sculpted. So I'm getting both the material and the depth and the gloss, the color, everything just by stamping it in there. Katink, 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 katink. You know, just think about how this would be screwed in. What did I miss? I just got back from a quick water break. <laughs> Tatiana, dude, I missed the whole beginning. Just turned in. Didn't see it happening. It's okay. It's all was recorded. Uh, I like to use both. Sol, sol, all. sol, Matthew. I'm pretty sure footage of the entire stream will be up later. Yes, it will be. Yeah, like all this, especially Facebook. It 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 will take a second for it to re-upload, but once I'm done, it literally takes like maybe a minute, maybe at most five minutes probably, and it's back and uh, running on on the site. So you just have to go back. But if you go, I, I mentioned this in the earlier stream or earlier part of the stream that if you just go to um, my Facebook page. That's where I'm going to be posting all these things. I'm basically just going to reshare this video on that page, so you can go, always go back and watch it there. Because on my Facebook profile, I post all kinds of different things. It's not just me. Um, it's not just me doing streams or art. Uh, sometimes I'm just talking about other things that are going on, like my family. But my Facebook page, I'm going to keep it mostly this type of stuff. Uh, and then maybe what we can do now is another layer called cut lines. And the reason why I'm having all these different layers so it's easier to manage, in in unlike in Photoshop where uh, having a lot of layers is not necessary, you know, creating like a final image, um, because you can always just paint it out or paint it in. And but with this, once you're dealing with different materials and different, it starts becoming really confusing and really hard to control. So this is just a tool that I like to do. Okay, so now I have, it's just a way that I, I prefer to doing. And so I'm going to turn off. Um, I'm going to basically turn off everything except for normal and then I'm going to turn off my material stuff too so that way I'm just doing it through here now I'm going to put on steady stroke so it's kind of like lazy mouse and then I'm going to go ahead and just do that I'm going to pick this and just just get that in there like that and then just do some cut lines. And now if I had a, lar a larger resolution, I could probably get some smaller lines. But since I'm working with 20K, it's, it's, it's probably as small as I can get it. Which is fine. This is again me practicing, doing some fun stuff. And see, I made kind of like across the streams here, uh, but I have eraser on, so I can just erase that. And then get back to having fun. I have tried Blender. Blender's cool. I have a friend, uh, Jerry Perkins, who's the Blender master. And every time I talk to him and he talks about what's going on with Blender, it's freaking amazing. And it always gets me back into Blender, but then I stop after I realize um, it's just one too many more softwares to learn. But not to say that it's a bad software, it's just that it's not overwhelming like enough for me to switch over entirely. One day I'm, I'm, sure, I'm sure it will be. Alright, so this is pretty cool. I'm getting like a lot of fun detail. Now, is this a practical design? I don't know. But is it f fun to look at? Sure. 
So now I'm going to just make another layer. I'm not going to really name it anything. Just going to do some fun stuff now. I'm going to turn off certain things. And then I'm going to kind of call it a day. I'm going to take this to the render room so you guys can see what that's about. But my tutorial series will be a little bit more... Um, my tutorials will be a little bit more in depth in terms of what's going on here. So like, so with the stencil, I can come in here and shrink this down and now I can like kind of sculpt like this kind of grill. And you can use whatever stencil you want. You can make custom ones, you can make, um, or you can download other people's stencils. For whatever reason, it's not letting me erase this. It should, though. Oh, it's because the stencils are still on. Uh, yeah, I mean, Dracus is up in here. What's up, Dracus? I was just never, or I never crossed the streams. I was just thinking the same thing, Robert. Yeah, it's, uh... It looks easy, but it's it's obviously with a lot of practice you're able to achieve certain stuff. So I'm painting more of this grill stuff here. And I'll, I guess I have to race it later. So just put it in now, erase later. And then I can get like more... Maybe I'll do this one like this. That's pretty cool. Okay, so maybe I'll put it somewhere not like intrusive to the design. Like something like that. And see, all this is just fake. It's not really happening. Right? It's all just normal maps. And uh, if you know anything about what I mean by this, it's, it's, it's very, very useful to be able to do something like this. Uh, what happened? I can't erase it all of a sudden. Hmm. I'm not sure why. This happens sometimes. Like, I, I am doing something. Um, eraser transparency. Is it zero? And sometimes I press a hotkey or two too fast, or press a hotkey that I didn't know exist, and then I turn off, like, everything that I was just doing. But, you know, the more you navigate, and the more you mess with something, and you, you, the more you can find where something went wrong or what you turned off on accident. But yeah, this is pretty cool. All right, let's do one more layer, which is the dirt layer. I'm gonna call it quitsies. Actually, I don't really like what's going on in this top grill. We'll make it much smaller, more subtle. All right, so we'll call that deet details one, and then we'll call this one dirt. And then we're going to go back to the shaders. I'm just going to start putting some dirt on this bad boy. And I'm just going to pick whatever dirt. And I'm going to pick like a kind of a cool brush to paint dirt with. See, again, I just keep forgetting to switch materials. All right. And I need to turn off the color and glass so that I can start painting this dirt in. And I'm just painting it everywhere because why not and then I'm gonna switch it to this dirt this is like dust oh, that's really cool I like that one uh, let me use something like this though or actually like something like this now it's it's a lot right now because I'm just kind of covering everything but like I'm going to erase a lot of it and I'm going to use another kind of like airbrush Maybe like this one. Yeah, this one's fine. And then I'm gonna do like more of a pen pressure type of thing. So like the dust on the top, right? Like this is an old like Power Rangers helmet, the Black Ranger that never got his helmet worn. And just painting it on there. 
and it's it's really great. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, at the end of this, like, if you look, uh, I mean, I never left 3D Coat. That's the beauty of it. Like, it's a software that kept me in here the whole time. The wireframe is still very low. It's like under, um, the the wireframe is like under 7,000 polys. And so it's, it's pretty nice, pretty clean, pretty fun. And I'm just going to go ahead and race back on the top. And like I said, I'm going to take this to the render room, call it a day, and then, uh, get back to work. So, so let's go ahead and take it to the render room. Let me turn off the perspective. And now if we go to the render room, you can see that I can start playing with the lighting. Let's turn off this. And so we'll just turn the environmental lighting to basically one, so I'll just turn it off entirely. And then Maybe like, not entirely, maybe like a five. And then I'm going to add some lights. And I'm going to turn off this real-time rendering for a second. And just so I can see where my lights are at. Do something like this. Scatter it a bit. And turn up the intensity. And then turn this back on, just to see what that does. Cool. Turn that off. Add another light. Now, the lighting system could be a lot better with 3D code, but I mean, the fact that I don't have to, really, again, leave and I can get something decent is pretty powerful. And then the intensity, we can turn all the way up and we'll get like a blue light. Because why not? Go to real-time rendering. And then I'm going to turn back on the environmental light a little bit. And just let it render. But the question is, can I find a cool position? Oh, can you guys hear me? You guys can't see anything though, huh? It's because of the hotkeys, man. Again, the hotkeys. The hotkeys. <laughs> I need to like turn off these hotkeys because they keep disrupting everything. Anyway, if you look, you should be able to see it now. Yeah, I guess I'll just have to man like it's, it's probably best to just turn off the hotkeys and then just do everything manual. So that way I don't screw my stream up too often. But anywho, yeah, I just did this and it's um uh, it's alright. I think I could have done a better job with some of the materials. But like again, it's it's not too late. I can go always go back to the paint room and fix things, you know? And then just go back into the render room. Uh, and also I can change the environment, maybe there's a better environment that I can render this in that makes this look better. And there's always Marmoset and Keyshot, like it's not like I can never take these this into one of those softwares that are really good for this type of stuff. Because the thing is like, the fact that I can't move the cameras around is pretty heartbreaking. But I mean, the fact that I can do anything that has some reasonable lighting in it, it's pretty powerful. Let's go ahead and rotate the light in the front or to the side. And here's a workflow that I thought about doing now that I've done this, um, like th throwing into the rendering room and then designing it w alongside the rendering room. But since I don't have much time, I don't want to do that now, but I'm just saying in general. One thing that I I think I've learned, though, too, is to have it better, um, have harder edges in my final sculpt. But, I mean, even this is pr still pretty cool, right? For as little time as I spent on it. Let's take this to 15. 
but like I spent a lot of my time just going back and forth, back and forth, um, with designing and like painting and designing and painting and designing. But yeah, I mean, there you go. There you have it, guys. Why the hockeys? Why the hockeys? <laughs> yeah. Oh, did the did the switch again? Look at that. It just changed on its own. I didn't do anything. I didn't press anything. It's just changed. Here, let me go to settings and just completely destroy the hockeys. Let's clear everything. No hockeys at all. Apply. You stay away from my stream. I wonder why it does that. It just completely switched. Yeah, and I, I don't, I'm not using a second monitor as of now, so it seems like maybe I need to get back into having a second monitor that I can kind of see. Oh, my stream just went black. I see. Yeah, so it's totally... So I, I have my hotkeys... I've been using the numpad. So if I use the numpad at all, I, I best expect that's going to happen. But it shouldn't happen anymore. And I don't think I need to have a second monitor at the moment. Second monitor has been giving straining me in my eyes a bit, so I stopped using it. Uh, if I ever need reference or images, I usually put on my tablet or my cell phone. So that way it's kind of a little bit more like a smaller workspace um, that I don't have to deal with. But anyway, I'm done. Yeah, when you were typing 15. Because 5 or 1 is to switch it to the intro. That's what it was. And I use my numpad often. I forget. I forgot that. So maybe I should set hotkeys that are not on the numpad at all. So that way I prevent myself from ever using it. Thank you guys, though, for your patience and your understanding of my technical difficulties. But yeah, so this is kind of like the, the end of the stream. I'm going to get going, guys, getting back to doing some work. Hope you guys appreciate the stuff. Like, again, this is just like a quick, like, you know, this is what 3D Code can do. Uh, but I'm going to put together a Gumroad video, which is a little bit more, hey, look, this is what you should do, like, from the beginning to the end, how you can think about the software, um, how this thing works, how that thing works, um, and the way that I use it. Uh, but if you want a more in-depth version or tutorial, I highly recommend taking Learn Squared's, uh, Jama's Learn Squared class, his 3D environmental one that requires the 3D Code software because not only does he show you 3d cut he shows you all this other amazing stuff and again i'm not endorsed in any way to, to promote him i'm i just love the guy and i think his class is amazing if you take it if you talk to any again any of his students you, he, they'll tell you that his, his class is really great so i hope you guys enjoyed the stream um i definitely had fun painting this it was a lot of fun very exciting and hopefully you guys got a lot out of it. I definitely got a lot out of painting it or s designing it. So let me get back to where lighting that I had. Actually, I like that other one. Let's see what this one's like. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's cool that I can just switch the settings too, right? So you can see. And it's just all easy. It's not that difficult to kind of experience different rooms. You know, I think it would be cool if there was like a Photoshop type version where you can just like click up and down to scroll through the different lighting rooms without actually having to, uh, well I guess, oh yeah, but the reason why that's not cool is because once I want to rotate it I have to stop. So it would be cool if I, I can rotate it and keep changing the rooms. But I guess it's like nitpicky. Anyway, cool guys. I am out of here. I'm going to have to stop the stream manually. Oh, look at that infinite stream. Peace out, guys. Thank you guys for hanging out. All those of you who are chilling, appreciate y'all. Later.